Hey guys, welcome to lesson number three. This week we've got some pretty cool reading that we've got going on. One of my favorite parts that I love is Elder Christofferson's talk, Come to Zion. Within the opening paragraphs there, he gives us a very important truth. He says, Zion is both a place and a people. So in today's lesson, what I want to do is I want to focus on the place uh, that was revealed to Joseph Smith to be built, which is the city of Zion. And uh, what can we learn about that place that helps us understand what we need to be as a people? So uh, one of the cool things about this for me personally is I've gotten to teach this recently with my students. As we were studying Ether chapter 13, it's talking about New Jerusalem. And uh, that New Jerusalem that's going to be built up on the American continent. And when that New Jerusalem was originally revealed to Joseph Smith, there are some pretty cool things about it. Now, interestingly enough, as I had my students start drawing this and we were talking about it, they said, oh, this is like what we're learning about in our AP Human Geography class. And I said, what's that? And they said, it's called the Concentric Zone Model. And they started to explain to me what the Concentric Zone Model is. And I thought, this is perfect. They're totally gonna understand this. Because the way that the Lord revealed to Joseph Smith to set up the city of Zion is uh, going, I guess, along with the concentric zone model in a way, it does have a concentric order to it. However, um, it's flipped kind of inside out on how that works. And that's the beauty to Zion. And that is where the world is totally missing it. And we as Latter-day Saints need to understand this revealed pattern of a place to help us understand how those principles can apply to our personal lives. So let's jump into it right here. This is a simple diagram of the plat of Zion that was revealed to Joseph Smith. I'm gonna try not to add too much to this here like I've done in the past, but uh, go with me here. You, you may even want to draw um, three concentric squares on a scratch sheet of paper as we're going through this. So this Zion is going to be built in a place um, that we now refer to as Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. And one of the names for this place, along with Zion, as uh, Elder Christofferson teaches us a lot about that, is New Jerusalem. Now there is actually a lot to that name. And one of the things I have a hard time about this lesson is, I'm trying to make mini lessons for you guys because I know you're busy, it's an online class, it's kind of just supplemental extra stuff if you like it. Um, but there is some really cool things just built into that term right there, New Jerusalem that the Lord gives to this. And um, you can learn more about that in uh, Ether chapter 13, um, but also you'd want to go back and study a little bit more about Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and um, why there was a Jerusalem and why there needs to be a new Jerusalem. Anyway, just sidebar on that part. So when this plat was originally uh, revealed to Joseph Smith, um, there, at the center of Zion is what the saints were supposed to build originally when they got to Missouri. And that is, of course, a temple, right? Uh, the Lord revealed to us that one of the reasons for gathering his people is to build temples. So the temple was supposed to be at the center. In the concentric zone model that my students were telling me about, the commerce goes in the middle. And um, that, that would be the shopping, the industry, um, that's, that's what the whole city is focused on there. But in the Lord's plan, the temple goes at the center. Um, and in this case, it wasn't just one temple. Joseph Smith, Smith had revealed to him that there would be 24 temples on the two city blocks originally here. Now, because that original plan uh, did not, I guess, take place as the saints procrastinated the building of the original temple there, um, I can't say how this will be the same or different in the future. All I'm referring to is the original plat of Zion that was given to Joseph Smith. And in fact, in, that, in those original plans, there were even a couple different drafts. But throughout those different drafts, something that maintained a constant was 24 temples at the center of the city of New Jerusalem, the Zion that we talk about here on the American continent. So that is really interesting. Now, what then would be outside of the temple if we're looking at a, a zone model here? Well, this is where the Lord intended the homes to go. And um, if you live in a city that was um, originated, what would we 
call that, I guess, founded by Latter-day Saints, similar to, um, you know, Nauvoo, Salt Lake, St. George, other cities like that, early um, settlements by Latter-day Saints. One of the things you'll notice is a grid system set up similar to this, which, because I didn't grow up in Utah, uh, totally confused me when I moved here, but now just makes great sense and uh, has awesome features to it. But in a grid system, uh, if someone doesn't understand it, pretty much what we're doing is we are plotting the land of a city around this center point, which is the temple. And Brigham Young did the same thing. You remember the story of him placing his cane in the dirt as they arrived here in the Salt Lake Valley. And he said, here we will build a temple to our God. And that place was marked. And um, from there, we have in Salt Lake City what's called the Base and Meridian. And it's right at the corner of Temple Square. And you can actually see it there. And that is pretty much where the whole city is laid out from. So um, a cool thing about that is wherever you happen to live in Salt Lake County, if your address happens to be numeric, then what you are doing is you are telling someone essentially how far you live from the temple. So let's say that I live at 133 South and 2700 west that's pretty close to the address where i'm teaching from right now what i'm telling someone essentially is if you're going to come here or deliver this package start at the temple then go 133 blocks north and 27 blocks west or excuse me go 133 blocks south and 27 blocks west and you will find the seminary even cooler detail, if I reverse those coordinates, I can get to the temple. I would go 27 blocks east and 133 blocks north, and then I would be right there at the temple. So uh, every address that we've got here in the county is essentially telling us how far we are from the temple, and that makes the temple the center point. Well, so here's where we're a bit inverse when it comes to the normal zone model that my students were learning about. This is where the commerce, the farms, and those things would all be happening, is on the outskirts. And um, for us, all of our focus would be on the temple, and everything else would be on the outside. When we need it, we go for it, but otherwise, we're looking towards the temple. This is reminiscent of a couple stories in the scriptures. We've got Abraham facing his tent towards uh, the, the promised land uh, when his cousin Lot is facing his towards Sodom and Gomorrah. We've got the people during King Benjamin's time who, when they come to listen to him preach, they all set up their tents around the temple, and that's their focus. And in the city of Zion, all roads lead to the temple. And that is an important thing for us to understand about this so that we can start to relate it to our lives. Now, let's uh, pause there on the principles of building a place called Zion where the temple is going to be at the center, the homes are next, and then the commerce and farms and such is on the outside. And let's see how that can become a pattern for our personal lives and the people that we need to become in order to build this place. So we know that the temple is really a symbol for Jesus Christ. So I'm going to take a picture of Jesus, put it right there. We know it's not the temple that saves us, it is Jesus Christ. And through his atonement, we are enabled to receive the saving ordinances that are um, administered in the temple. So. If this diagram represents my life, I know that my life needs to be centered on Christ. And this comes in uh, handy when talking about referring to an important quote that comes from President Benson. And President Benson had said this. He said, when we put God first, all other things fall into their proper place or drop out of our lives. I know that's true. The more I've done that, the better my life has been, the easier my life has been, honestly. Um, so 
there would essentially be some things that we would never let within the city limits of Zion. Yes, Christ is going to be at the center. I'm going to be focused on him. There are going to be things in my life that come next, but that's going to be behind Christ. That's not my priority. It's not my focus. And then there are going to be some things that are just outside of my city limits that I never touch. Remember when we talked about Corianton before, Corianton had ventured to the borders of the Lamanites and encountered the harlot Isabel. Well, we want to make sure that we're not venturing to the borders of the Lamanites. We want to make sure that we're well within the borders of Zion. And so we need to evaluate where would my spiritual address be? If this is my physical address that I'm telling someone, here's how far I am from the temple. Well, what would my spiritual address be? And how close could I get? Would it be something like 50 East North Temple Street? Is that the way that I'm living my life where I'm trying to be right there, right next to the temple, attending regularly, um, participating in the ordinances, uh, doing my family history, and then making sure those other things are there when I need them, um, but they're not at the center like a priority. And so as we start to look at some of these, this is where my students kind of like me at first because I'll put things out here like, School, yes, it's essential, yes, it's important. But if we reverse the importance and we put school at the center and Christ on the outside, then we end up losing everything in the end and our ladder was leaning up against the wrong wall the whole time. The cool thing about the gospel is we can have both. And when we put them in proper priority, then we actually do better. The one where they don't really like me is when I start to put something like this. Sports, right? put that on the outside and we say, really, what should the priority be? Yeah, we love it. It's a lot of fun, you know, things like that. But if it's not Christ-centered, then we understand we need to put it outside of, you know, the, the city. Not, not outside the city limits, but on the outskirts of the city there. Um, now, on this part, what I'd like to emphasize as well is if you think about all of the um, manuals that have been produced for the youth, the, those manuals on every single cover, right, for the strength of youth, um, personal progress, duty to God, they've all got a temple at the center. It's all pointing to Christ because as we focus on the temple, we are focused on Christ. And that is the great pattern of the city of Zion is that everything, all roads um, lead to the temple. Everything is focused on the temple. And so everything is focused on Christ. And when we do that in our lives, I know that everything really does fall into its proper place or it falls out of our lives. It just doesn't even fit in those city limits anymore. So to wrap things up, um, what I'd like to demonstrate here because it's gonna be coming up in a future lesson is how this relates to um, the ancient tabernacle. So I'm gonna pull over a little model that I made for my students of the ancient tabernacle. I'm going to try to swap my camera around and see if we can get this to work okay here. Maybe I'll just go like this. Oh, here we go. So with the ancient tabernacle, I'll just hold it up here. Um, we had these three zones as well, just like we see up on the board. We had the outer court, which is where you would bring your sacrifice, just like we've got the outer part of the city of Zion here. And as we go towards the altar of sacrifice, there would be a priest there. Um, who would administer the sacrifice on my behalf. Oh, this is getting a little crazy here. And um, then I've got the next part that I enter here. And on this part, oh, let's see what we can get. Hold on one sec. I'm going to swap it around. Oh, can't swap it. Okay. <laughs> on this part, we've got that next holy zone. This is, this is called the holy place, and this is where we would find the altar of incense along with the what we now refer to as the menorah, but the candlestick, and the table of showbread that they would have out throughout the week. And then and, uh, we would have the next place, the most holy, where we see the presence of God. So let's see, are we getting that there? Now you don't want to touch that if you've seen Indiana Jones, uh, you know what I'm talking about there. But essentially the tabernacle was made in this same fashion where we've got this concentric 
design of the city of Zion, which is leading everything to Christ. So we, we enter, essentially, the city of Zion. We, we come into the city of Zion as we come to the sacrifice of the Savior at the altar, and we give up our sins. Now remember, it's like Elder Maxwell said, it's not so much even a sacrifice of an animal, it's ourselves. I call that the natural manimal. We put our natural man on the altar of sacrifice, and that allows us to move on as we have faith in the atonement of Jesus Christ and repent, to move on to essentially what they would do here is, it's called the laver. Um, if you're familiar with like Spanish, that would be to wash. It would be a ritual washing that took place here, but that also represents baptism in our lives. And so as we're baptized and we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we are able to move on to this next part where we've got that menorah candlestick that helps to represent the light of the Holy Ghost in our life. We've got the table of showbread, which is symbolic as well of the sacrament that we partake of to allow us to always have his spirit to be with us. Little interruption from this school. <laughs> And then we've got a, an altar of incense, which represents daily prayer because the, the smoke from the incense would rise up symbolically like our prayers going to heaven. And as we continue faithful in these ordinances, then that prepares us to enter into the Holy of Holies someday where we are able to cross through the veil and return to the presence of God. So... I know that's a lot, and actually, I even have a lot more <laughs> that I wanted to share, but I, I don't want to burden you guys. Um, I just want to show you some cool patterns, because like Elder Christofferson said, Zion is both a place and a people. And as we come to understand the place that will be built someday, it will help us understand the patterns that we as a people need in our personal lives to be able to be prepared for the Savior's second coming and return faithful to the presence of our Heavenly Father someday. And I bear that witness to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.